Hey, everybody, it's Pete Carmesino here at Chicken Analytics. This is the Halftime Show. Thanks for tuning in. And today's show, we're just going to go over the Chicken Power Gauge and the plug-in and how you can get it and then what all of these things mean. Um, so we're gonna, just going to go over that a little bit you know, one by one just to kind of see um, what's happening here in the Power Gauge, how you can use it to your advantage, and really how you might be able to start to utilize the plug-in uh, for a really nominal fee. Um, and it sits right on your platform right here. So first things first, as you go to the ACP platform, you click on the little plugin here, and then you click on Power Gauge. Um, taking analytics, you can see it's only $40 per year. Uh, if you click on that, it's going to take you straight to uh, our little landing page here on Stock Charts. We appreciate that, by the way. And um, obviously, it's a fundamental rating. Now, don't forget, there are technicals that are embedded into the rating, but they, are, they don't play a large role um, as far as percentage-wise. In other words, uh, all of these factors, there's 20 factors you can see. They're broken down into four categories, financials, earnings, technicals, and experts. There's the technical aspect. But these three make up about 85% of the power gauge rating. Now, we rate uh, roughly over, well over 4,000 stocks right now. It's a combination, as we say, of fundamental technical and sentiment data built by Mark Chaikin. And you can watch a little video here about Mark, uh, about the plug-in. He does a great uh, job of presenting it. But in general, this is the landing page that kind of gets you started to, A, first understand what it is, um, and then B, you know, how we utilize it as well. But the real main point of this is that it's a 20 factor model and we are combining the things that we talked about here, right? So if you start with financials, you see debt to equity, price to book, things of that nature in there. And then it goes on and it moves into earnings and then technicals and then experts. And this area is really interesting because you can start to see that sometimes the estimate trend and the analyst rating trend are sometimes behind the financials. Now, this ex example isn't a good one, but we're going to get into uh, the platform and go over a few examples just to kind of show you what they look like on different stocks uh, currently at, at the moment. Um, and that's kind of the best way to, to look at this. So let's dive into some of the names in the S&P 500 and go over their power gauge right now. Okay, I'm back here on the ACP platform. I'm just going to close this plugin area uh, because I obviously have it. And once you add it to your platform, it gives you the little check and power gauge icon right here. If I click on this for Caterpillar, I see it's obviously very bullish. Okay. Um, obviously, you can see where financials and earnings are, but look where technicals and experts are, right? So this is kind of the flip side of what you might be able to see. Now, I can't dive into it into each category. So I'm gonna have to go to the Chaken platform here on Caterpillar and look at financials in each particular category, right? So long-term debt to equity, price to book, things of that nature. So, I mean, the first category is pretty simplistic. It's the total long-term debt divided by the total common equity uh, for the latest quarter, all right? And that's kind of how we're looking at it. Now, obviously it's got a high long-term debt. We know Caterpillar's business is highly capital intensive. So um, that's good. Now, cash flow is a little weak here. And so you start to see where the financials can get neutralized, so to speak, because you've got great return on equity, decently priced as far as price to sales, uh, running at about, I don't know, two and a half times sales or so. And cash flow is a little weak along with price to book and uh, long-term debt to equity, right? And what's price to book? It's basically the ratio of the stock's current price divided by its book value per share as of the latest quarter. Return on equity is the income available to common shareholders as a percentage of average common equity for the past five years, okay? You know, you start to get to understand how these are sort of relating to the current situation, right? Price to sales, uh, this is a ratio of the stock's market cap plus long-term debt divided by sales over the past 12 months, all right? And then free cash flow is the stock's net free cash flow relative to its market cap for the latest quarter. And so a lot of these have different time frames to them. And that's kind of the way it is designed or was designed, I should say, by Mark Chaikin. And it's basically over his time frame in the market, that's what he found uh, people were using. And so he put these metrics together. And then there are weights that we weight each particular factor 
And then obviously it gives the group of financials its own weighting, right? And then we derive the very bullish from these four categories put together, all right? So if we jump into earnings, right, we can start to see these, these factors. You've got earnings growth, earnings surprise, earnings trend, projected PE, and so on and so forth. So let's just break them down. Earnings growth is the weighted average of the last three to five years growth in earnings per share, right? Earnings surprise is the weighted average of recent quarterly earnings per share surprises, all right? So on our charts, you can see this, where you see green EPS, they beat estimates. And where you see red, they missed, pretty simple. Um, so that kind of gives you a quick overview of that. And then you've got the next one is earnings trend. And that's the earnings per share percentage change over the trailing 12 months, all right? And this one is actually bullish for Caterpillar. And then you've got projected PE, and that's the ratio of a, current, of a stock's current price divided by its earnings per share as of the latest quarter, right? And then earnings consistency is the final one. That's the consistency of earnings per share over recent projected fiscal years. So recent and projected. In other words, we add a little bit of forward looking, but we weight the most recent ones, okay? And so that's really what we're anticipating. So if the company comes out and says guidance is better and they've got a better outlook, right? Above current earnings estimates, it gets a little bit more voting power in there, right? And that's kind of what, you know, we want to, we want to have some predictive nature to this. Again, we're not going to give you the weights. That's kind of the, the proprietary nature of this, but it's good to understand what you're looking at and when you see these, okay? The next is technical factors, which I think most folks here on, on stock charts are going to quickly understand uh, since it's a technical platform. But, you know, we, this one's got very bullish setup. And obviously, you can tell by the chart, it looks, it looks great. But, you know, relative strength, we know what that is versus the market. That's the stock's six-month price performance versus the S&P. So down here, you can see it's been fantastically strong. And really, where did it start to break out? Right around October or so at 187. And just using that one technical indicator along with money flow and some other things, the rating had already changed. You've got a really good combination right away. Chicken money flow is described everywhere. You can find it even on stock charts. There's, there's definitions of this uh, on the platform. And chicken money flow is a proprietary technical indicator uh, that calculates uh, buying pressure or selling pressure for a stock. Now we say proprietary, but the formula has been out in uh, the world for, for many years, I think since the 1980s or so but it is, uh, was Mark's um, invention and you know, his sort of claim to fame along with some other oscillators that he created. Moving on to price, trend, rate of change. That's the, clearly, let me, let, me, let me make a note of this. It's the 42 day change in divergence from the stock's 200 day exponential moving average, the DEMA, right? That's our long-term trend indicator. So when you start to see this break out, if you look back here, this was a neutral rated stock for many months, but on the earnings per share and the move above the long-term trend, there was some recalibration here before EPS because we've got a bullish rating in that Thursday of the week of October 24th. And obviously the earnings didn't come out until the 27th, right? So that's the predictive nature uh, of the rating as well. So once it technically got above long-term trend, it was easy to, easier easier for it to turn bullish with all the underlying factors kind of weighting uh, toward the bullish side. All right, last is volume trend here. Uh, the ratio of a stock's 30-day versus its 90-day average volume. Okay, just that ratio of those two, 30 to 90-day. And last, let's go over experts. This should finalize our sort of overview here of the Chaikin power gauge. Uh, first one seems pretty intuitive here, right? Estimate trend. It's the analyst estimate trend. It's the 13 week change in analyst earnings per share estimates for the next fiscal year. So the estimate trend is looking forward. Short interest is the percentage of stocks outstanding shares that investors have sold short, but not yet covered. Okay. Insider activity is pretty simple. We know it's the net shares of stocks purchased by companies, insiders over the past six months. Now we're only looking six months back. We're not looking several years. So it's just in the last six months. Analyst rating is a four week change in a stock's average analyst rating. And the industry relative strength is the six month performance of a stock's industry 
versus the market, okay? The industry. So now that's again over a six month period. So remember, we were looking at technicals here for the stock, that rate of change. Remember what that was. That's the 42 day change in divergence from the stock's 200 day exponential moving average. So how much has it diverged from this particular line? And then obviously we look at the industry. So that's helping us locate strong stocks in strong industries from a technical point of view. Okay, folks, I can't stress enough that you should get to this landing page uh, through the ACP platform. Again, I'll do it one more time. If you are on the platform, you go to this little plug-in area, and then you look for Chicken Analytics. You click on the Chicken Analytics site. You get down here. You can learn a little bit more uh, what I just talked about here, but you can see the factors and how they're laid out, right, and what we're talking about. And I would watch this video by, by Mark to kind of understand how exactly how how to use it. And one other thing is our power feed uh, article that we talk about. Uh, I've talked about it several times. If you go to the power feed link, it's just shakenpowerfeed.com. You could read the latest content. That would be today's content. We had an article here on Salesforce. You can look at the archive. It's all for free. Kind of go over some of the ideas here. And there's some educational things or some stocks that we're calling out as well. And then obviously you can sign up for it. If you hit sign up for Jake and PowerFeed, it's just enter your email here. It's free, right? And you get a lot of information about how the system's being utilized. And there are some ideas that we go over and we'll break down some names like we did to, in today's PowerFeed, uh, or should I say Friday's PowerFeed, um, which was on CRM. And that was by um, our director of research, Mark Gerstein here. Okay, that was on the 17th or so. All right, folks, so that's really uh, a great overview. Hopefully this could be sort of something that we can keep as an archive video um, to kind of understand exactly how the power gauge works. And today's example was Caterpillar uh, using, you know, utilizing the power gauge. So thanks again for tuning in. Really appreciate it. And uh, we'll be back next week with a, a live and video version of the halftime show here on Stock Trucks TV. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great day day hey grayson rose here with stock charts thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed that video if you did consider giving it a like down below maybe leave us a comment and if you're new to the channel you can subscribe at the link up above we're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts